Good morning. I live in China full time and my electric bill is about $7 a month. I live in Kunming where the weather is comfortable pretty much all the time. Previously I lived in Qingdao which gets cold and in Shanghai which gets hot and cold and there I was paying $14 or $15 or so. So no matter where you are then power bills aren't much of a thought here. That fact is a significant driver of Chinese industrial productivity, by the way, because factories in China just cost much less to power and run compared to factories in Europe especially. All that in mind, when Chinese firms announce breakthroughs in the power sector, it's not just for the domestic markets that they have it in mind. The Aero Engine Corporation of China is actually a manufacturer of aircraft engines and the company recently introduced a revolutionary giant gas turbine. It's the most powerful China-built turbine. And media here point out that this is a 100% made in China project and that only a small group of countries are capable of producing large gas turbines. The Taihong 110 program has generated over 100 patents so far for design, materials, manufacturing, testing, and rollout. This is a primer on how gas turbines work. And they do have strong applications in the aviation sector. The demand for natural gas turbines is at record highs, and so are the order backlogs for companies that build them. And it's from that perspective that we should view developments like these. Aero Engine Corporation will be able to sell these new giant turbines as fast as they can build them. Their primary market may, in fact, be here in mainland China, and I'll let you know if my electric bill goes from seven bucks to 650, but it's much more likely to be everywhere else and to utilities and power producers who are waiting in a long line to buy turbines from other manufacturers. The natural gas boom and demands for electricity to power AI data centers mean that turbine manufacturers cannot produce nearly fast enough to keep up. Siemens is one of the only companies that builds them and they're ramping up output but still are way behind. In the next five years 46 gigawatts of natural gas power will come online which is a big jump over the previous five-year period but turbine manufacturers haven't yet met the demand from prior years. As of today, there's a five-year wait for new orders coming in. The three biggest suppliers of the industry are GE Vernova, Siemens again, and Mitsubishi. Backlogs are at record levels for all of them. At GE, their backlog is $20 billion today, up from just $6 billion two years ago. A quarter of their backlog is in North America, and Asia makes up a big chunk of the rest. Siemens' backlog is 131 billion euro. At Mitsubishi, they had planned to add capacity to increase production by 30%, but that wasn't nearly enough, so they hope to double it over the next two years. Buyers are making non-refundable deposits, called reservation fees, just for the privilege of placing an order and waiting in that line that lasts for five years. Those fees are outside of the production slot agreements, which is the formal production and delivery contract. Naturally, utilities and power producers are looking for suppliers anywhere they can, and that's what Aero Engine Corp has already figured out. Assuming they can have these turbines rolling out of their factories someday before 2030, and assuming they can do so at a price that's competitive with what Siemens and GE are asking for, the buyers are already out there. And remember that the demand for these turbines is global. Aero Engine Corp was placed on the OFAC sanctions list during the first Trump administration, so utilities in North America aren't allowed to buy these new turbines, but lots of other places can. Countries in the Middle East have natural gas coming out of the ground every time they punch a hole, and electricity demand there is soaring. 
So we should expect that to be a huge market for these new turbines. And there's almost no point in asking anymore how any of this new business will be done. It won't be in U.S. dollars. To emphasize again how we need to read news stories like these here, in this case for low-cost power generation. It won't move the needle very much for Chinese households or industrial users because we already pay some of the lowest prices in the world. Instead, it's great news for the Chinese company that figured out how to build the things, great news for power producers outside the United States, and bad news for GE and Siemens and Mitsubishi. This is the Leifong Pagoda in Hangzhou. Be good. Treasure, there where your heart 